Lismore is a city located in New South Wales, Australia, known as the Rainbow Region, symbolising its enchanting blend of cultural diversity, community and commitment to natural living. Nestled amidst the undulating hills of northern New South Wales, this area is celebrated for its alternative lifestyle, exceptional artists and gourmet produce, crafting a truly unparalleled experience for visitors and residents alike. Lismore is situated in close proximity to some of Australia's most remarkable World Heritage listed reserves, breathtaking national parks and expansive state forests. Among these natural wonders are Mount Warning National Park, enveloping the caldera of an ancient volcano as well as the border ranges and nightcap national parks. Additionally, Lismore boasts the last 11 remnants of the Big Scrub, a vast rainforest that once covered much of the region, making it a haven for nature enthusiasts and conservationists alike. In 2005, the residents of the city were rocked by the death of a backpacker in mysterious circumstances. Simona Monica Strobel was born to farmers Gustel and Gabby Strobel on the 20th of September 1979 in Rieden near Würzburg, Bavaria, Germany. She had two siblings, a sister named Christina and a brother, Alexander. The Strobels were known as being a quiet and respectful family. In 2004, the 25-year-old was employed as a kindergarten teacher and she had a desire to see more of the world. On the 3rd of August 2004, Simona and her boyfriend since 1999, Tobias Sukfuel, flew to Australia to begin what was reported as a working holiday, which was due to last for approximately one year. On January the 25th, 2005, Tobias's sister, Katrine Sukfuel, joined the pair along with her friend, Jens Martin. Together, the quartet toured Australia in a camper van. They explored the Northern Rivers region and spent time in Nimbin. The group planned to travel to Lismore to conduct banking transactions before continuing on their journey. Despite enjoying their trip around the country, the relationship between Simona and Tobias seemingly began to sour as February marched on. The couple appeared to have engaged in an argument on the 9th of February, and the following day there was obvious tension between them. They arrived at the Lismore Tourist Caravan Park in Lismore, New South Wales on February 11th, 2005. Simona, along with Tobias, Katrin and Jens, checked in for the night. Later, they enjoyed drinks at the Gollan Hotel on the corner of Woodlark Street and Keene Street in Lismore, but were asked to leave by Paul Harris, the bar manager, at 11.10pm. Consequently, they returned to the caravan park. Tobias and Simona then allegedly fell into an argument with one another, which resulted in Simona walking away from the campsite. The next morning, Katrine and Jens became concerned as it appeared that Simona had not returned to the caravan park. Together, the pair began searching for her in the surrounding areas of Lismore. Having been unsuccessful in locating Simona, they returned to the campsite where they packed up and checked out the following morning on February 13th. Once they departed, they travelled to Lismore Police Station at approximately 10.45am, where they reported Simona Strobel as a missing person and told police that she had left the campsite after the Sukfuel siblings had a disagreement. Days passed with no signs of Simona leaving her loved ones overwhelmed by anxiety and fear over the welfare of the 25-year-old. A senior constable from the New South Wales Dog Unit discovered her lifeless body on a bocce court within the premises of the Lismore Continental Club on February 17, 2005. The club is located approximately 90 metres away from the campsite in Lismore where Simona was last seen. 
Simona was found naked and in an advanced state of decomposition, concealed under palm fronds. After Simona's remains were discovered, the Richmond Police District, supported by the Würzburg Criminal Police and the Würzburg Prosecutor's Office, initiated Strike Force Hoea to probe her murder. Approximately 200 individuals gathered for a candlelit vigil beneath a eucalyptus tree, close to the location where Simona's body was discovered. Simona's brother, Alexander, reportedly alongside an uncle, arrived in Lismore on the 20th of February. The community of Lismore rallied together to support Simona's loved ones, as well as Tobias, Katrine and Jens. The kind-hearted folk of Lismore managed to raise approximately $6,000 for Tobias so that he could return home to Germany. Despite this display of kindness towards them, police had not disclosed the fact that they were suspicious of the three, mainly Tobias Sukfuel. Police released security surveillance footage showing Simona departing from the Gollan Hotel on the evening she was last sighted. The footage depicts her exiting the pub with three companions. While crossing the footpath towards the road, one of the men accompanying her pauses to wave at someone inside the establishment. As two individuals exit the frame, Simona remains on the pavement, engaging in conversation with one of her companions from the hotel. The two unidentified individuals re-enter the frame and their conversation with Simona resumes. A peculiar flaw in Katrine and Jens's recollection came to light when they told police that on the morning of February 12th, they had searched for Simona through the Lismore CBD, yelling out for her in the hopes she would reciprocate their calls. However, inspections of CCTV footage of the area found no trace of either Katrine or Jens scouring the area at that time. An inquest into Simona's death took place in July of 2007, where Jens Martin, the only one of the trio who attended proceedings and testified, admitted that both he and Katrine had lied to police regarding the events that took place on the night of February 11th, 2005. He confessed that Tobias had insisted that they deceive police about what had happened on that fateful night. He stated that he consented to falsehoods due to having consumed illegal substances the previous night, and Tobias expressed desire not to be regarded as a suspect. An interpreter for Jens told the inquest, quote, I don't know who killed Simona. It's possible Tobias may have had something to do with it. It's not my job. Simona's cause of death was also discussed at the inquest, and although it was not confirmed, investigators told the coroner that they believed that Simona had been asphyxiated, likely on February 12th. Despite being found naked, the autopsy concluded that there was no evidence of sexual assault. On October 16th, the coroner made his ruling. Coroner Paul McMahon highlighted witness accounts reporting, quote, intermittent screams heard from midnight to 1am on the Saturday morning. However, he emphasised the challenge in conclusively attributing these screams to Simona. He concluded that there was insufficient evidence to press charges regarding Simona's death, and he urged Tobias and Katrine to provide testimony. Journalists managed to locate Tobias in South Africa, where he denied any involvement in Simona's murder. In August of 2010, it was reported in the media that the Strobel family, who had stuck by Tobias for many years, accused him of continuously lying to them, and any faith they had in his innocence had diminished. In the winter of 2011, another article published in the media revealed that Simona's father, Gustl, disclosed that Katrine told him that she would never talk about what happened to Simona, quote, even if you torture me. In 2014, the Bavarian Office of Criminal Investigation offered a 10,000 euro reward for any details that could lead to an arrest or conviction. 
Furthermore, on October 15th, 2020, the New South Wales government and law enforcement announced a 1 million Australian dollar reward. Originally slated for February 2021, a subsequent coronial inquest was postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. On July 26, 2022, 43-year-old Tobias Moran, who had since changed his surname from Sukfuel, was arrested and charged with the murder of Simona Strobel. He attended the Perth Magistrates Court and was held in custody awaiting extradition to New South Wales, where he was set to appear in court in Sydney. Following his extradition, Tobias, who maintained his innocence, faced charges of murder and perverting the course of justice. Additionally, arrest warrants were issued for Katrine Sukfuel and Jens Martin on accusations of being accessories after the fact. The scheduled certification of charges against Tobias Moran in the Lismore Local Court on June 14th, 2023 was cancelled after the court was informed that the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions had chosen not to pursue the case, resulting in the withdrawal of the charges, which were officially dropped on June 23rd. Tobias's wife, Samantha Moran, told the media, quote, I am deeply ashamed that this happened to Simona in Australia, a visitor to our country who Toby has always described as an angel on earth. I know that there is not a day that goes by that Toby does not think about Simona and wishes that he had stopped her from walking away that night. Simona was laid to rest in her hometown of Reading on March 5th, 2005. In Lismore, near the site of her passing, a small bench was installed, adorned with one of her most beloved quotes. Defenceless I will be, and vulnerable I know, on the open sea, and only protected by love, your love. Richmond Police District Commander Superintendent Scott Tanner said, quote, We know the truth is out there, and we know there are people who are holding it back. He later stated, quote, This is a crime which has stuck with many families who have young relatives travelling the world. The thought of losing them so far away from home is hard to comprehend. Help us put Simona's family at ease. The investigation remains open, and anybody with information regarding the murder of Simona Strobel should contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 triple three triple zero or via nsw.crimestoppers.com.au